Welcome. My name is Andrew Moore from Neil Butcher and Associates and UNESCO has asked me to put together a short progress report on REB UNESCO projects. We're involved with two. The first one I'm going to talk about is the e-assessment project. Basically, we've been asked to uh, drive a process whereby uh, the REB and uh, various teachers will start to be capacitated to develop their assessment uh, online or using digital tools. Um, so I'll talk a little bit more about that and also be able to show you some of the materials that we have already developed on the platform. The second uh, initiative is the Open MOOC and OER framework. Uh, this is really a uh, not a policy but more of a strategic strategy or a, um, a implementation a plan uh, in order to help the Ministry of Education, the REB and the University of Rwanda move forward in terms of using massive open online courses and integrating open courseware and open education educational resources into the types of training initiatives that they, are, that they develop. Um, I will sh show uh, in this video um, what, what we've done so far and uh, where we would like input from the REB. Let's have a look what we've already developed on the Moodle platform in order to support the e-assessment project. Um, you can see on the screen at the moment that we are developing content for six particular curriculum areas. Uh, the first one of primary five, we've got elementary science and technology, English language and maths. And then for senior two, we are developing materials for biology, chemistry and geography. But we've also um, started to develop the e-assessment training materials. So there are two courses, one on an introduction to assessments, and the other is um, ICT-based diagnostic assessment tools. Okay, I've clicked and I've gone into uh, the course number one, Introduction to Assessments. And in here, you can see there's the, um, introduction, uh, the entrance to the lesson, different forms of assessment. And basically, that's where formative versus summative assessment is unpacked uh, and where the ICT can support each is illustrated. Um, the idea then is that this would be something we would use um, during the training, um, both with the REB people, just so they can see um, what we're covering, but especially for the teachers, because when you're designing e-assessment, it's all according what the purpose of the assessment is as to which tools you should use. So this is uh, would come up right up front where we would unpack these, um, these two issues. One of the deliverables of the e-assessment project is that we should put together some exemplars. So um, we've committed to 300 questions uh, across those six subjects. Um, and the idea then is teachers will be able to see what's already in the data bank in terms of questions that they could use, uh, but we'll also have to train them so that they can create new ones and look for uh, or, and develop questions for parts of the curriculum where we have not. So um, some of it's very simple, for example, multiple choice. Um, this first question, how many apples in this picture? And you can choose a question. Uh, uh, an option and then um, a check. This is an example of formative assessment where there's immediate feedback uh, for the student and you can see therefore that my choice was incorrect. Um, uh, we try to make it visual. You can see here there's even some um, little avatars trying to provide a strategy about how they might find the answer. Um, this one is also a multiple choice in the end though. Uh, and um, the idea then is that uh, under e-assessment for formative assessment, it's something where the teacher doesn't even have to be there. The student will be, be given immediate feedback. Here's a slightly different one, um, drag and drop. So um, where do you put the apples? Is this a five here? Probably not. Uh, and they can drag and then see to what extent they got any of them right.
for the more senior students, uh, we have to push the envelope a little bit further. So even though we can use multiple choice for the students, we want them to actually do quite a bit of work before they make their selection. So uh, in this case here, they had to work out bearing uh, on a map and um, the options are pretty close. So they have to be accurate in order to choose the correct answer. It is formative assessment though, so they can check and they will get some feedback on the on the uh, on their choice um, the the what we can also do is use the drag and drop again this one is uh, particularly for photograph types so is there a ground general view is there a ground close-up um, an oblique an aerial uh, an aerial vertical and so the idea is they need to um, drag and drop put them in the correct order of I'm not even sure myself where some of these are supposed to go my geography is a bit rusty um, let's go something like that and um, again they get an opportunity to to check um, the the uh, another example is uh, for the senior students again we want them to be able to uh, calculate distance uh, on a map and therefore they have to work out uh, the distance from A to B, the distance from A to D, and so on. And in this case, they can choose from a selection here and um, choose what they think might be the right answer. Um, and yes, and so with geography then, we, and the nice thing is we can use maps, we can use videos, we can use a whole load of multimedia. Uh, in order to make it um, uh, interesting and exciting. Uh, but there's still quite a lot of uh, technical work that needs to be done uh, by the student in order for us to ascertain whether they have these technical skills. So there you had a very quick look at the types of things that we're doing. Uh, keep in mind that the project is not only to create the exemplars, but also to train REB people and the teachers to actually start using e-assessment tools. Um, uh, it's not all Moodle. There is also uh, other tools that will be looked at in the training, but um, the, uh, the, one of the requests was that we design the exemplars for the Moodle platform, for the REB's Moodle platform. Um, so uh, what we would like to request from REB is we desperately need some local content experts to guide us. At the moment, we're in South Africa. We're using um, open textbooks where we can find them to, to uh, guide what we're doing. We do have access to the REB's uh, curriculum, which we are using, but we need local expertise and we're hoping REB can identify who those content experts might be. Um, we also need a time when we can um, actually get to uh, uh, train REB staff and we need REB to set up the pilot with the teachers. Uh, REB needs to identify who those teachers would be so we can ascertain if it uh, actually does work. Um, yes, so those are our requests for REB. We desperately need your input. Thank you. The second initiative that I want to highlight uh, for this video is uh, the work that we are doing to help create the national framework on MOOCs and OER. Uh, there are three institutions which really uh, will be impacted by the framework, and that includes the Ministry of Education, uh, the REB, and also the University of Rwanda. Um, the idea though is there's already policies in place there's the ODEL policy there's the ICT and education policy which all um, encourage the use of MOOCs and OERs and other open resources um, but there seems to be a dearth of capacity at the three institutions currently uh, in order to exploit the potential benefits that would come from using these resources. So uh, that's what this framework is supposed to be. It's supposed to be an attempt to understand um, what skills are required and what goals or milestones are, uh, could actually what well, make sense in terms of the development of uh, staff at those three institutions. 
the framework, uh, we've, we've got a draft copy which has been circulated. We've even had a little workshop around it and there has been some valuable feedback. But um, we really do need the REB to um, uh, give us their opinion as to whether they believe uh, what's in the document is feasible. Um, if we scroll down and have a look, you can see that this draft um, copy here, for example, tries to identify what are the ICT skills, what are the um, uh, the general prof uh, proficiencies that staff would need in order to exploit MOOCs and OERs. So um, what we're trying to do here then is identify what these skill sets might be. So skill set number one at the moment is just general basic ICT skills. Um, then we feel that there is an, a need for advocacy and awareness about open education in general. What are ICT and education global trends? Uh, what is UNESCO's sustainable goals pushing for? And um, in order to, sh to shape um, what's in this document, we've made a lot of use of two particular um, publications. The first one is the guidelines for OER in higher education and the other one is making sense of MOOCs. Um, UNESCO has had a hand in getting these uh, documents published um, and therefore uh, we were encouraged to use them uh, but they are very useful and so you can see um, what we've tried to do in these skill sets is identify where these skills tie up with the opinions of those two uh, documents. The third group is really effective pedagogy and instructional design for technology assisted learning and um, it's, it's um, a lot of the principles uh, come from good old-fashioned distance education but there's no doubting uh, in this day and age uh, educators need to be aware of how technology and pedagogy go together in order to um, elicit uh, efficient learning. Um, and the uh, a fourth set, assessment strategies, um, then there's one on quality assurance, and we've even got one on how to provide support and facilitation, and how do you collaborate and share. Um, and so the idea then was what we really wanted was the three institutions and maybe some of the other players, stakeholders, to actually weigh in and tell us whether they believe that these um, these skills uh, were in place or whether they were required and based on that audit the idea was then that we could come up with a capacity building methodology um, this is probably where the document might be a bit contentious and that is that all training should really be seen in the context of developing a product so the idea then was we wouldn't just provide training to um, staff at the institutions, but they would be they would be tasked with developing a MOOC or a online course, a piece of open open courseware perhaps. Um, and it doesn't matter if they were at the ministry or at the REB or at the university. The idea was that they should really work together in order to achieve this. Um, you can see already that the dates are way out of sync at the moment. It's already um, May and yet we were hoping to get things moving in February but that's fine what we need now is for the REB to come in have a look at this give us their opinion and uh, help us move forward our open framework um, contract also includes a little section on developing an anti-plagiarism policy for the University of Rwanda and, and we have worked this workshop this already and we've got some a lot of good ideas what we're finding is that at the university of rwanda there is already an, a, a whole load of different documents not always called a policy which um, kind of already provide structure for staff in terms of detecting and penalizing uh, uh, incidences of plagiarism uh, and so what we're really trying to do is just pull these pieces together into um, one document um, this is uh, the latest version and you can see what we're trying to cover is um, uh, what is intellectual property rights um, what is what is plagiarism 
uh, how might we set up educative and preventative mechanisms such as courses and advocacy sessions and um, trying to get people aware that if they're working in an academic environment, plagiarism is, is very much um, misconduct and uh, has dire penalties. Uh, but then the, also, how do you detect and penalize? Um, and the idea is they want to use Turnitin as a uh, technology mechanism to identify plagiarism, but then uh, they are, the university has already come up with a set of uh, penalization scales. So uh, the idea was to work those into this document. Um, from an REB perspective, what we would really like is um, for the REB to have a look at this, see if they're in agreement with the direction that the university is going in, and then they can advise other um, higher education institutions which are um, uh, working in the education sphere. Right, and uh, there you can see some of the things we're doing for the, the MOOC and the Open Courseware Open Framework. Um, REB, what we would like, uh, well, as you can see, this is something that an external person um, can only push so far. In order for this framework to, to work, it really does need the input of the local people, uh, particularly the REB, uh, as to whether they think this, these initiatives would work. So, um, again, Please, can you have a look at the, um, the draft documents, uh, be it hypercritical, we're, we're very happy to adjust and change. Uh, we want the framework to be useful and the only way that it will be is if local expertise has weighed in and uh, helped shape it.